Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Joe Emilio Show. I'm your host, Joe Emilio. And as promised, Phil Craig has joined me from the Cape Independence Advocacy Group. Phil Craig, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, great to be back with you, uh, Joe. As always, man, always a pleasure. And, you know, we, we, we booked off this date quite a while ago, uh, but only announced it recently um, because you had a lot of cool things happening in the Cape Independence movement. And today... I mean, you dropped kind of a bombshell on everyone. I didn't even see it coming. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I did share the, um, the, the uh, what's it called, the, the press release earlier. Uh, you will see there um, the Western Cape Devolution Working Group uh, has been formed. Uh, listen, man, you tell us all about it. What is this, what is this all about? Uh, should we be excited? Is this one step closer to Cape Independence? Yeah, look, I think it's I think it's a very significant step. Uh, it, it clearly, it's, it's a devolution working group, so the focus of the group is not uh, is not secession itself. Um, but uh, but you know, clearly the whole thing is that, you know independence itself to, to a certain extent is is a game of chess, and we've got to make sure we make all of the the right moves. Um, and this is significant in that uh, you know, we, we, we have a group of, of very, very powerful organisations who've got together uh, and collectively are looking to take power away from Pretoria and deliver it to the Western Cape. Uh, and in that group are you know, autonomists and federalists and secessionists, and we effectively agreed to set aside our differences. Um, at this point in time and focus on uh, getting some power away from uh, from Pretoria uh, and and to the Western Cape and collectively we're clearly a lot stronger than we are individually uh, and from that point of view it's a very very significant step um, and I think obviously you know you you, you see you can think uh, yeah the DA are very very keen to to devolve powers and have been struggling uh, um, you know they made a number of promises in 2019 and then uh, and then again in 2021 around devolution um and uh you know they've not been able to deliver on those they're asking for control for policing's been their main focus you know that they, they uh, they're asking for control of policing but they're they're being told on a regular basis you know uh, becky chili has told both uh, alan windy and gordon hill uh, jordan hill lewis no uh, and then last week sir roma porter got in the act and he also said no uh so, you know, from that point of view, then this is a very, very healthy situation. And, and clearly policing is one of the issues that the group is going to uh, going to tackle um, uh, from a from a secessionist point of view. Clearly, any doors that we open to taking power away from Victoria and delivering to the Western Cape become significant, because once you break open that door, then uh, you know, and, and one power is devolved, then others tend to quickly follow. And we can, you know, we can see that historically in, in many places around the world. So so this is this is significant. You know, it, it's not the, the smoking gun. Uh, this isn't a secession group. It's one more string to our bow. It's not, you know, it's not everything. Um, but it's significant. And when you get organizations like the DA and the Freedom Front Plus and the ACDP uh, and uh, then Afri Forum and, and uh, uh, Cape Forum and uh, um, SAI and Action Society and ourselves, Cape Independence Party uh, and some some uh, uh, legal experts as well, all coming together and sitting around a, a table and saying, right, how are we going to do this? Well, you can do that. And what about if we do this? And how, how do we help each other? And, and effect, literally then... Uh, planning step by step how we're going to achieve some of these ends yeah clearly that's a very very significant uh, step and, and and one that uh, everybody frankly is quite excited about i think we've all had enough uh, and uh, you know it's it's it, it's 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 i i you know in many ways i hope this is the start of the of of the, of the fight back uh, and uh, you know and i think people are, are uh, I, th I think people are becoming Dare I use the word radicalized uh, and, and certainly willing to go a little bit further than perhaps they might have, have done uh, a, a few years ago. So, yeah, it's positive. Look, I, I do think it's a positive thing. I was mentioning before you came onto the show that it is a, a powerful group that you have here. <coughs> this isn't just any organizations. These are very powerful, uh, influential organizations, especially the, the uh, political parties that are involved and even the uh, civil society group that is involved. But I wanted to ask you a few things about the working group. Uh, so firstly, um, I don't see Cape Exit on here. Is there a reason for that? Is it, it or were they not interested? Did they don't want to play ball? Or uh, are they just busy doing their uh, another 
as you've mentioned before on the show, there's diff- with the Cape Independence Movement and with what's going on, there's many different cogs in the bigger machine. Um, so are they just maybe another cog on, on a different part of the machine? Look, so Cape Exit were invited and, 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 uh, and declined to attend. Um, they uh, look, they have their reasons for doing it. And, and obviously they're entitled to, 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 uh, to pursue those. And um, one of the reasons that uh, that they're sharing on their platform is that they, uh, you know, they they feel that that devolution is is uh, uh, let's call it a sellout or a or a, 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 a compromise they're not willing to take, um, which clearly isn't our intention. You know, we, we we're not settling on devolution either. Uh, I think yeah, if I can if I can use a boxing analogy, uh, you know. Capex that perhaps want to uh, win the fight with a knockout in the first round, and and we're you know we're we're willing to uh, to trade trade punches and and uh, you know and, and get a bit further into the fight, um, but it, you know they're, they're obviously entitled to uh, to to uh, make their own decisions in in terms of their. Um, you know, and I think probably we've always had a different, had had a slight difference in terms of how we handle the political parties. To them, from our point of view, uh, the DA are the the for want of the better expression, the gatekeepers of Cape Independence. You know, they, they only they can call a referendum, and you have to get into that political ring and you have to work with those people. Um, and uh, you know, you, you you have to fight for each inch of ground, and and ultimately you'll you'll get where you need to get. And I think the um, yeah, if you ever want to see the perfect example of that, it's 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 Nigel Farage and. and and, and Brexit in the in the UK, uh, and in many ways we often look to, to, to that campaign for inspiration from our side. Um, Cape Exit prefer not to engage in others with, with others really, and, and um, but that's their choice to make. I, I think I think it was the wrong choice to make, but but I respect that, that they uh, that they had the that they made that choice. They had the opportunity to be part, and they chose not to be. Yeah, I was just I was just curious, genuinely curious, um, and I think that's like you said, fair enough. Um, you either on or you're not, but like I said, you have a very influential group of people or organizations, rather I should say, that are, that are part of this uh, this group, which is very exciting. Um, I just wanted to tell the audience that is watching, please do keep your questions coming in. I will address them towards the end of the show. I've seen a few questions already come in, and I have marked them to uh, ask Phil at a later stage. Uh, so please do, if you uh, have any questions, do pop them in the live chats. I do keep an eye on them. Um, other than that, uh, one more thing, Sai. Sai was a group that, um, honestly, I was surprised to see. Um, <laughs> so so how, because correct me if I'm wrong, but Sai is more of a agricultural <coughs> kind of uh, organization, if I can put it that way. Um, how exactly, or, or what's their role in this uh, working group, devolution working group? Yeah. So look, I th- look. The, the, the basic uh, tenet of the of the working group is is that collectively we have far far more authority than we have individually because we now bring to the party the capacity to mobilise people, to bring legislation, to to um, uh, take court cases. Um, and to, to mobilize you know groups of of of, of civil society um, so so you have to take all of those groups together and i think clearly you know all, all of these organizations for example uh, Sai uh, represent individual farmers and, and clearly farmers are deeply concerned about the future of south africa um, and i think anything that starts to uh, you know starts to 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 offer solutions to the problems that we're facing are going to be attractive and the the um, the devolution working group has a focus on the western cape but it's open to groups from outside of the western cape who also want to establish the precedent and i think it's really important to understand that the, the value of precedent so if we if we can uh, get power away from from national government and start to to disempower national government and empower people, whether it's the Western Cape people or it's the, the the Zulu people or it's farmers or whoever else it may be. It's beneficial to to everybody. And we've always had this view that, that Cape independence is a is is you know, this. We're not talking about Cape independence in the group, but the Cape independence the same that it, that it has a has a knock on effect. Uh, and if we can create a, a area of the country that is stable and secure and govern better, then, then actually that benefits the rest of the country too in many, many ways. 
That sounds good. So they represent the farmers and the agriculture part, yeah. part of everything. Um, and I agree with you. You know, uh, again, all these organizations uh, definitely coming together is much stronger than individually. And I, I can't wait to see what your working group, uh, Devolution Working Group, will do next or what the first thing will be, which you have mentioned is going to be the uh, dev devolved policing uh, power. Uh, and obviously... Uh, referendum legislation those are your initial focus and now I mentioned sure. that initial is uh, is the key word there um, because that sure. is the beginning which you're first focusing on could you give us a bit of uh, a teaser of, of what you might be focusing on if you got the policing power <coughs> and you got referendum legislation what would be the next focus of the group or have you guys not thought that far yet you're focusing on the first thing no, well, look. So, so um, first of all, let me let me say that we that, that we we had our initial meeting, and the meeting took place under uh, Chatham House rules, which basically means you can't really talk about uh, who said what or who did what, which which allows for a much more open discussion. Um, so, so therefore, the, the, to a certain extent, you know, I'm limited in what I can can say. Um, but, at, but at the end of the meeting, we agreed these two things that, that everybody agreed on. We were going, we were going to cooperate in terms of uh, of, of policing powers, uh, and there are a number of of, of key actions that I can't talk about. But, but different groups are going to contribute to that. So it's going to be a coordinated effort that clearly is going to put considerable pressure on the national government around policing. Um, and then the referendum legislation, which of course is long, long overdue and already promised by the by the DA, uh, and uh, there's been a, a renewed commitment uh, to to getting that through as a, as, a, as a matter of urgency. Um, and clearly, uh, you know, the 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 let's say the net has been widened in terms of the groups that are involved in there, and and in the working group, I mean, there are certain things that are on record. The DA have said they'll bring the referendum bill, and, and obviously published the in draft form. You've had Afri Forum who've said that they they are willing to take the government to, to court or to Parliament to court and force for them to pass the referendum bill. Um, and uh, you know, and around that, you know, we we we're now looking to see action. So they're the, they're the two things that'll happen, I think, fairly quickly. Um, it, it looks like we probably will have a have a um, uh, a rewording of of the bill, uh, but I think that 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 should happen quite quickly, and all of the groups will be involved. Um, and um, yeah, there were there were some other parts to that as well that I can't really talk about, but. Um, those two things were, were you know, were, 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 were priorities and fairly urgent priorities. But the group also allowed for um, uh, allowed for all parts of the group to necessarily, you don't, we don't all have to work together. So the idea is that we come together and we drive certain agendas and perhaps some of those agendas we're all on board with. Um, and some of those agendas were not necessarily all on board. And I think the the for for, for people who followed the CIAG, we, we, you know, we haven't been too explicit because we haven't wanted to... Um, uh, to narrow down other people's options, obviously, when you when you go out as a, as a lobby group as we are, and you you make a really definitive statement, then you then you take up or take away space for other people to 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 compromise or to to think. But but if you if you look at the language that we've been using for the last few months, with you know, there's a word that's really come onto our, our onto our vocabulary, which we didn't use an awful lot before, and that is self determination. Um, and uh, we are pushing very, very hard for a self-determination bill to be brought. Uh, and in fact, the self-determination bill is going to be brought. There's just the only debate is who's going to bring it uh, and what's it going to say um, and what's it going to be called. It probably won't be called the self-determination bill. Um, and you know, as an organization, we are uh, we've been lobbying quite hard for the Western Cape to claim the right to self-determination. Um, and, and not necessarily in the context of secession or clearly once the Western Cape claims the right to self-determination, it will be able to claim secession should it so wish uh, if, you know, once it sort of goes through all of the necessary steps. Um, but interestingly enough, the right to self-determination can be exercised in four ways under international law, uh, autonomy, uh, federalize, uh, federalism, uh, secession and unification. Um, so, so one of the things that we've been pushing quite hard for all year, and we, and we, you know, we, one of the things we've been pushing the the, the DA on, um, ha, has been to look. You know, you don't need to keep asking uh, Becky Chili if you can take control of the police. You could just claim the right to self determination, and then, then you, then when you set out how you wish to exercise your right to self determination, you can claim the power of policing and many other things besides, including taxation and 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 so on. And, so, uh, yeah, obviously, we would like to see self-determination exercised in the form of secession. Uh, but actually, if we can, if we can all co collaborate um, 
then uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can get, the, we, you know, the right to self determination would would benefit everybody. And and and, I, and at this at this point in time, I'm not going to name names, but there is another political party um, that that is going to bring that bill uh, if we don't get a, a wider agreement. And 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 so that's something that we are, we are negotiating. And um, look. Uh, we're we're in the latter stages of of of, of those negotiations, and I, and I don't know how they're going to fall. But what I do know is we are going to see a self determination bill in one form or another coming, and I think that will be highly highly significant, and it would be a huge huge step for for Cape Independence. And I think our focus really o- over the course of this year has been the two the referendum legislation. Which clearly we need in place to 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 to, to uh, demonstrate the the will of the Western Cape people uh, and the self determination bill, which suddenly takes away the power away from uh, away from national government and vests it with the people of the Western Cape. Um, and just for, for for context, the right to self determination isn't something that the South African government has the right to grant or deny. Um, it's it's an obligation under international law. So once we claim it, the uh, the, the the national government has no choice. It can't say no. Uh, and in fact, were it to say no, that would be the grounds, the, the necessary grounds for secession. Uh, the, the remedial session is remedial secession is the denial of self determination. So therefore, it suits us very well to ask the national government for self-determination. And clearly, the autonomists and federalists would uh, would, would, would want the national government to say yes um, and uh, and grant them self-determination to have those controls. And for the secessionists amongst us, we, we, we kind of win either which way by a self-determination bill, because if the national government says yes, then, then we've got much greater devolved powers and we're a step further down the road and closer to our ultimate goal. Um, and if the national government says no, uh, and uh, and that be, that falls on the parliamentary record, then they have uh, created the precise grounds for remedial secession under international law. Uh, we would still clearly need to have a Western Cape government that was willing to 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 claim uh, secession, um, and that's you know clearly that's something that we're going to have to work on. Um, but uh, yeah, there are two focus. They're the, they're the two bills. Well, that is some interesting uh, stuff. I feel like I'm watching a bit of Game of Thrones here. Everything that is kind of like being put into place for what might happen in the future, backup plans, moving these pawns here and there. Um, it's very exciting times, I think. And uh, you actually answered a question I was going to ask, you know, well, what what if the ANC says no to the bill? Uh, so you answer that right now. Um, but uh, I, had, I had another question uh, for you, Phil. You know, the... The Cape uh, Secession movement, you know, they, they, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, Cape Exit kind of sees you going along with the whole <coughs> devolution thing as a, a sellout move. Um, I obviously, knowing you and speaking to you, I, I know that that's not the case. Um, and I know that you use the analogy of a, of, of a boxing match and, and you know, it's a, in a way playing the long game. And I, I understand that. But I think there are a few people that might feel a bit discouraged that you might be changing your tactics in a way that, uh, you know, oh, if we got devolution, then Cape Independence Advocacy Group and specifically Cape Independence Advocacy Group might just settle for that. So let's 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 say you did you guys got devolution. Would the Cape Independence Advocacy Group still push for independence? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Look. Yeah. We, look. We, our, our end goal is 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 secession, <clears throat> and I think you know clearly we have to you know we we have to just keep moving moving forward. Uh, devolution is just a step, and I think people have to understand you you. Um, <sighs> The political environment is constantly changing, uh, and and you have to you know you have to act accordingly to and and one of the huge changes that that, that has affected really the last twelve months in South Africa was the local government elections when the ANC fell under fifty percent for the first time, and all of a sudden everybody started reimagining a different sort of South Africa, um, and and you know it, it, absolutely pointless putting your head in the sand and pretending that didn't happen. Yeah, you know, it's clearly visible. It's visible across all of our platforms. Platforms is visible across our, all of our uh, our allies, and it, it's it's taken a bit of time, and it has required some patience. And I wish we didn't. You know, in many ways, we've had a. I can't say we've 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 lost six months or, or, or nine months. Um, but 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 
you know, that took a bit of a, a, a turn that we'd never really expected. You know, we the, the, I know he was really anticipating that that level of of loss uh, in in twenty twenty one, and suddenly there was this period of time where South Africans were suddenly almost deluded, fixated on 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 coalition government in twenty twenty four, and. And at that point in time, we just had to be patient. Now, now I'm a, 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 a numbers guy. I think I may have said to you before, my mother was a maths teacher. And they often the, look at the, 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 the movie, The Matrix, of all of the numbers coming down the screen. And that's how I see how I see a lot of things in, in, in life. Um, so for me, it was instantly apparent that there's no way there's going to be a, a, a decent coalition government in 2024. But actually, the main political parties have been very keen to spin that narrative. Um, obviously, a lot of the metros fell, which are fundamentally different. So people must understand that a metro falling to a coalition government is very, very different to um, the national government falling. So because what happens is, if you take, say, Chwani would be a good example. Now, Chwani has has a population that is that 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 is um less representative of ANC and EFF voters let me say than the national average not quite the western cape um but i mean a greater proportion of of minorities and uh, uh, and also then then urban voters um middle class urban voters so it was it was it was possible in chwani to create a fairly stable coalition between the DA and the Freedom Front Plus and Action SA of all parties who are relatively aligned. Obviously, the DA and Action SA are squabbling nonstop, but um, relatively aligned and they can create a stable coalition government. But that can happen in Shwani and it can happen in, in um, uh, 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 you yeah. know, other places, I can't think of other great examples. The Joburg one isn't quite so stable. Um, but I mean, when you come to a national coalition, it's going to be more like Nelson Ma Nelson Mandela Bay, where where no coalition government has ever seen out its term. And and you can do the maths. In two thousand and nineteen, there was there was a 40, 48 political parties, and. Uh, I think the, the, the DA, the a ANC and the EF have had something like 86% of the vote or 85% of the vote. And the other 45 parties had 15% between them. And those three parties dominate. And actually, there isn't going to be a coalition government that doesn't contain two of those. It's either going to be the ANC and a couple of the little minnows because it because it falls just below 50 percent. Or it has to be the ANC and the EFF or the DA and the ANC. Or, or the DA and the EFF. But they're the only three choices, and none of those are palatable. Um, and actually, the most dangerous of the lot is the DA EFF one. Um, and, and I don't think that, the, 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 you know, the DA are saying they won't go into that, but they're saying they won't go into coalition with the EFF, they won't go into coalition with the ANC, but they're going to be in coalition government. But that's mathematically impossible. And they know it's mathematically impossible. They just want to get you invested in the idea of coalition governments. Um, so, you know, we're going to be in this situation where 2024, and I say it, and I've been saying it from the start, but I've been saying it again, is things are going to get worse in 2024, not better. You know, we, we actually are, are going to have a far worse government then than we've got now. Um, you know, so, so uh, and, I, and I think the penny has started to drop slowly. It started to drop. The election analysts are starting to say, hey, look, hang on a second. We've got a bit of data now. I think this is how it's going to play out. Um, and the the, you know, the main political parties, uh, the DA included, are, are, are being a little less bold in their predictions for 2024. So in that space, we've just had to be patient and, 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 and let that narrative catch up and let people start to, to, to make that sense. Um, and then interestingly enough, what you're likely to see in 2024 is, is, is the Western Cape will clearly not be in the ANC EFF hands. Um, and it, there's a possibility that Gauteng may fall out of, of ANC EFF hands. Now, if you start thinking of that, now the, between the Western Cape and Gauteng, they, that's half of the South African economy. Now, imagine a scenario where half of the South African economy sits under the opposition parties. Then they want decentralization. They don't want the national government you know, being in control of the, of the places that they're running. Um, so yeah, we, we end up in this slightly different environment where, where all of a sudden devolution becomes really, really important. So what do we do? How do we create momentum for the independence movement? Well, we've got a choice. We could, you know, we could just keep on talking Cape independence in, in, on its own, and that's fine, um, but probably not very counterproductive in this environment, or actually to recognize that there are all of these other organizations who, who want to go 
80 or 90 percent of the journey together with us and actually we can work together to do that 80 or 90 percent of the journey and then when we get to the end we can go our separate ways and, and clearly it makes a lot of sense to to use this dominant momentum that, that the DA and other parties around them want to create towards devolution and to work with them on that to get us much much nearer to to, to Cape independence and if we can come out to the end of this process with the right to self-determination for the Western Cape and the referendum bill in place, then I'll be very, very happy because we'll be a stone's throw away from Cape independence if we can get a government in the Western Cape um, that, 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 that wishes to push that. And obviously the DA have already said that they're willing to allow the people of the Western Cape to make that choice for themselves. Uh, and I think at some point we'll clearly need to put some political pressure on them to do that. And, and there are already plans afoot around that. Yeah, and, and speaking of that referendum, I know you alluded to it earlier, but, uh, you know, uh, a, a letter was given to Premier uh, Alan Windy uh, to, you know, hey, where is this uh, legislation on, on the referendum? Um, and what where is that process now? Um, we, you know, you did a whole march, you gave <coughs> a letter, and we haven't heard anything since. So what, what is there any update on, on that front? No, so 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 well. There is up, there's an update. It's not it's not particularly a great one, um, but but it is what it is. Uh, so the DA still haven't tabled that bill in in Parliament. So they so they they announced they were going to table the bill. Uh, they they made uh, uh, several promises. The last one I think when we spoke the last time, which was around about uh, June or July, June I think, and they promised they were going to uh, to table the bill in in, in July or August, but they didn't. Um, and uh, yeah, but that was something that was that was addressed at the, uh, the at the working group, and that's why the referendum legislation is now one of the, the key areas of, of of focus. So we're hoping to see that addressed fairly quickly. Um, Alan Windy himself, yeah, you know, you've probably seen as you know, he is not a, a fan of Cape Independence, and he's dug his heels in, and he's said some things that 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 yeah you know, that, that have have us quite irate. It's fair to say. Um, he was in. Uh, he was in. He was in uh, the provincial legislature about three weeks ago. And in fact, we called. We think we, we we accused him of misleading the house, and we called upon, upon him to uh, to retract his uh, his statement. So he, he hasn't. Um, but that's okay. You know, our, our comments are on record. Uh, he he uh, said that uh, that if there were if a referendum existed, if a re referendum took place, that everybody in South Africa would get to vote, which just is is not true. Uh, absolutely nonsensical. Uh, we, and we challenged him to provide a single uh, international example of that. And, on, and, and when he can't, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to apologize for having misled the House. Um, and then, and even more ridiculously, uh, he, he, he equated um, uh, uh, um, elections with referendums and he said well actually there is a referendum every five years uh and if you don't and if you and if you want cape independence then you better vote for it um so uh, now look i don't i, I yeah you know, i don't think alan is particularly <laughs> representative of the <laughs> um, a bit of a uh, joe biden tendency there <laughs> Especially given that oh, oh yeah that actually we've uh, you know we've reached an accommodation with the, with the DA in the past to, to to not force voters to choose between Cape Independence and the DA, um, uh, given that the majority and the majority of Cape Independence supporters vote DA and the majority of DA supporters support uh, support Cape Independence and therefore you have this uh, situation in the Western Cape where where forcing people to choose potentially is a lose-lose scenario uh, where just allowing them to decide for themselves on Cape Independence as was promised is a, is a, is a win-win scenario. Um, so look, uh, in all honesty, that's something we're addressing. I don't think I'm going to go into too many details uh, now, um, but uh, but we have i'm not i don't mean addressing with the da i mean something that we that we have a have a plan and if alan windy wants us to uh, to demonstrate that uh, that voters want cape independence then we we plan to do that in, in a quite emphatic way and um uh, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 let, we'll we'll let actions speak for themselves and uh, and then i then uh, we we hope that alan will have a good dose of egg on his face at the uh, the end of the uh, the thing and and, uh, and 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 it'll serve him right quite honestly yeah, but I mean, you know, let's let's get down to the point because I think a lot of people are going to be angry uh, about what you've said um, because the DA seems to be uh, in a way lying or 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 um, just drawing things out. Uh, do you think they will put this bill on the on, in front of Parliament? Uh, do you think maybe Alan Wendy will 
keep to what the DA said about, you know, hey, we'll let our people vote or Western Cape people, I should say, vote um, on this referendum? Or do you think this is just a politics? <coughs> like, do you think it's actually going to happen? No, look, so, so, so I do. Uh, and, and I think it's going to happen on two bases. It, this was discussed at length in the uh, in the in the, the Western Cape, uh, the only working group. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a, there was a great deal of un unhappiness and, and not just from the, the, the CIAG that the referendum legislation hadn't been called. I think it's key to a lot of people and we all understand that it's essential. Um, so I think I think that helps an awful lot. And there was obviously, the, it, you know, you can see from the press statement, the assurances that it's going to be there. Um, and then, and then privately, um, from the from the highest levels, um, we we also have have had assurances uh, because I mean it's yeah you know, there's no question that we you know this was supposed to have been tabled a long time ago. Uh, people are rightly suspicious, you know, uh, are always suspicious of politicians. And actually, when you know when we've had a scenario where they haven't kept their timetable, uh, you know, people are right to be angry. We, we're angry, you know. You obviously it doesn't it doesn't help to throw your toys out the pram. Ultimately, we we've got to get the thing brought, um, but. I can say that, that, yeah, that, that I've had, let me just say, I've had personal assurances from the highest levels uh, that, that, that the promises that were made will be kept. All right. Well, as always, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, oh, yeah. I, I got to admit, not, it's a rocky start to these promises, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to bring up, and we kind of also alluded to this topic a little bit, but... Um, you know, uh, I, I shared earlier in the week, uh, well, last week, um, a quote from uh, R. W. Johnson. I'm not going to be able to quote him verbatim, but <coughs> basically, it was a small clip from David Ansara's "Solutions with David Ansara," which I believe you've also been a guest on. Um, and uh, R. W. Well, David asked R. W. Johnson about Cape Secession and would it be a thing? Would it happen? And R. W. Johnson gave a very interesting uh, response to that, in a way alluding that the DA might be preparing for an inevitable state collapse and in a way secession would happen. Um, do you think this could be a game plan that is on the table for the DA? Do you feel that they might be, you know, they might have a plan B on in their in their cards? <coughs> Yeah, look, it clearly isn't their their, their first plan. Now they, they've clearly got national ambitions. Um, but but I mean, what you're talking about is 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 de facto secession. In other words, you know, it's not it's not a law we pass in Parliament. Uh, it just happens, and and the, and the Western Cape becomes uh, independent because because Africa really ceases to exist as a functional entity. Um, and uh, clearly, look, I mean. Yeah, that's happening now is the honest answer it's 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 where, where does the extent happen where, yeah where does that uh, where does that stop and where does it start and i think you know you're going to have these two processes that meet in the middle you're going to have uh, the, you know the legal form of secession which i guess is the one that we're primarily draw, uh, um, uh, pushing uh, de jure as they call it um and um you, and de facto is going to come from the other end so on one hand you're going to have this sort of top-down pro approach where you're where, where you, you know where we're pushing for, for for the laws to be changed um and uh, on the other hand you know you, you're going to be taking more and more powers and, and as the as the uh, the western cape uh, uh, as the sort of national government becomes you know less and less functional then clearly the, the the provincial government is going to step in and take more and more powers um Look, I, and I think we mustn't underestimate 2024. Um, you know, the, the question is, what will the DA do if you end up with an ANC EFF coalition uh, who are intent upon changing the South African constitution, uh, implementing some radical form of economic transformation? Uh, I, I strongly suspect that in such circumstances, the, uh, the, 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 the DA would, would be open to much, much more radical solutions. Um, and, I, and, I, you know, and, I, and I think you should see this whole, whole situation around secession as, as fairly fluid. Uh, obviously, for the secession organisations, it's simple. For us, we want secession um, and we're willing to sort of, but I mean, obviously, we're, you know, we're willing to, to, to cooperate and help in terms of, of devolution and autonomy and so on. Because it's a move in the right direction, um, and and likewise, you know, clearly the the the, the organisations like the DA have got a plan A, um, and uh, you know that that will be for for national coalition government. Uh, as I say, it's not mathematically possible. If I know that and you know that, 
they know that. I mean, at the end of the day, they've got access to more polling information than, than we have. So, that, you know, they're not expecting to have a national coalition government in 2024, of that I'm absolutely certain. Um, I think they're just waiting to see how much ground they can make up. And perhaps, you know, if they can fake it before they can make it, then maybe they get enough support to to, uh, to sort of get close to doing something that's significant. Um but I think they understand very well that the realities are uh, that's not going to be the case. And I think you're going to see them then pushing for strongly for, for powers uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the, 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 the provinces and metros where they do govern. And you've seen that not just in the Western Cape. I mean, you can look at Pretoria where they were trying to, to, to get some you know, the, the, uh, the electricity generation project through. Um, so, uh, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting times. But I think I think the I think yes, there are circumstances un under which um, the the DA will recognise that they have to they have to consolidate you know, or, or protect the Western Cape, uh, let shall we say, and the other areas where they govern. Uh, but in in this context, the Western Cape uh, against a a dangerous and unconstitutional South African government, and that is where the right to self determination is exactly what we all need. Agreed. I couldn't. I couldn't agree more with that. Um, look, I, I think in in some ways, you know, the state collapse or the imminent uh, collapse of the state with the uh, ANC being in power um, is beneficial for uh, the Cape Independence Movement in one way or another. It definitely. I mean, even now, you know, where you release this press statement in the midst of the worst load shedding we've ever had in South Africa the past two weeks. It, it's I'm not saying that it was planned. Maybe it was. I don't know. But, I mean, it's something that's also <coughs> going to get people talking, you know, talking more about Cape Independence because now it's like, well, yeah, I'm sick and tired of this load shedding. We know the DA is making arrangements to hopefully be off the grid in two to three years. Um, and and it's going to get more people talking about policing and all that stuff. I mean, all that stuff from uh, Ian Cameron constantly talking about how bad the crime rates are. Um and, and people are getting angry uh, with Cyril, with Becky Tele, with the entire ANC government. I've seen uh, recently now, finally, they're, they're admitting that Cyril doesn't have uh, the popularity that he used to. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a politicking or whatever and how true those numbers are. But my point uh, of all this is that the ANC, I think, see the writing on the wall. They know that maybe they'll hang on in 2024 by like a ball hair or like you said, have a coalition with uh, smaller uh, groups of, 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 of parties to get them above 50%. But um, a lot of the analysts are saying that the ANC will still be in power come 2024. But come 2029, will there be a South Africa to yeah, yeah. save? And I, I do think on some level, the DA sees this as well. <coughs> They're not stupid. Um, and are making arrangements as a backup plan. Uh, okay, well, things are going to go to crap. Let's let's make sure that we can save some parts of South Africa. Um, I'm going to go a bit to the uh, questions, if you don't mind, Phil, unless you want to say something to what I just said. Um, I would, you know, I'm just going to say one thing, and I think that is, is let's look, um, I, th I think in general, the DA have done a pretty good job, but let's, let's remember, they're not going to be driving this. Th so, 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 and we're not passengers in the process. The people of the Western Cape are not passengers in the process. And there are other political parties involved in, 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 um, uh, you know, in, in the working group, in the independence movement. Um, and, you know, as I say, this self-determination bill is coming. Um, it, we, you know, we, we don't yet know whether it's going to be a, a multi-party um, uh, thing or it's going to be a, a single party, but, but, it, but, it, but it's coming. Um, and that's going to put the, the you know, if, if the DA don't support it, it's going to put them in a very, very difficult situation because they, they you know, you're going to have this situation where the DA formally is a federal party. And they're effectively either going to have to support this bill or vote against their own principles, uh, and 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 you know that's not going to be an easy situation to be in. So we mustn't just think that the only that we're sitting here at the mercy of the DA. We're not. Um, you know, clearly they're the, they're the the power broker in this whole situation, and the, and they hold the, the whip hand. Um, but I mean, we you know. We, we absolutely have the power to influence them and to to force their their hand on many issues um and uh, you know that, that's that, that's ab absolutely what we in, we intend to do on the issue of self-determination uh, and you know run up in 2024 we certainly don't intend to be uh, 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 lame ducks sitting around to see if we end up with an anc eff coalition anything but 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, again, you mentioned it, and I think R. W. Jemison also mentioned it in the interview that if there was an ANC and EFF co coalition, I think the DA would quickly change their tune and be like, "We want out. We want. We want our own country." Um, so, and I think, and I, I you know what, I think uh, KZN would also follow suit with with that. So, um, but uh, let's get to some of the the questions. Um, there's there's actually a lot. Uh, of questions coming through. So thank you guys so much for giving these questions. Um, all right, so I've got a question here from L my five pence. Some of the names are very interesting on YouTube. Um, ask Phil, uh, will in cloud the a NC? Okay, so I think what the question is is will will the Cape Independence include uh, Northern Cape as part <coughs> as part of the Cape? I think that's the question. Yeah, so look, it's not, it's not, it, it's, it's a question we get asked a lot. Ultimately, it's not our decision. Yeah, the, 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 the boundaries of the of the Cape will be based on the democratic will of the of the Western Cape people or of the of you know, the Cape people. Um, but I do expect in the end of the process that large parts of the Northern Cape would be involved in it would be would be included in an independent Cape. And I think what's likely to happen is the legal process is, is going to focus on the Western Cape initially. Um, I think it has to. Uh, it's obviously clearly it's the only go the only province that doesn't vote DA. Uh, and therefore, then we, you know, we have this. We already have a voters' role. We've got a provincial government. We've got a, 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 a provincial border, and it makes all the sense in the world then to focus on the Western Cape to to, to get to the referendum status. But let's imagine a scenario where we've had a referendum and the Western Cape has voted to secede. And now you go into the process of negotiations between the Western Cape government and the national government. Clearly, there's that, yeah, that's going to be a massive, massive uh, restructuring of South Africa. And at that point in time, huge amounts of, of things are going to happen. I mean, it's going to kick off the breakup of South Africa anyway. Uh, as you say, groups like the Zulus are almost certainly going to come with me too. But but specifically in terms of the Northern Cape and parts of the Eastern Cape, there are large sways of the Northern Cape and, and some and smaller sections of the Eastern Cape, which are butt on to the, to the Western Cape, which also traditionally reject the ANC and, and, and the EFF. And undoubtedly, they're going to say, well, look, if you're going to draw, draw a border, we want to be on that side of the border. We want to be in the independent Cape rather than in South Africa. And I would expect to see then additional referendums at uh, probably at municipal level uh, to allow... You know, these groups, you know, I guess, municipality by municipality, uh, to see where the board is defined. Um, and almost certainly in the end of the process, that would include p parts of the Eastern Cape and, and, and much larger parts of, of the Northern Cape. So so that, that would be my, my prediction. All right, cool. Um, this is uh, Tertia Moritz uh, asking, uh, any prediction on how long it could take? Uh, uh, hopefully so sooner rather than later <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> And, and, and look, it, it, it's, it's a tough one. Yeah, you, you, you guess and you, you want to be optimistic. And actually, we've we've probably been over optimistic in the, in the, in the start in terms of where we where we, we, we get to. Um, look, I think I think the referendum legislation should be tabled fairly quickly. Now, I, I would I, I would hope in the next in the next three or four months will be a reasonable guess. Um, uh, and then let's see where we go from there. If we can get the look, the referendum bill, funny enough, will be not the referendum. The the self determination bill will be a provincial bill. Um, so if we do get the uh, if we do get the the um, uh, the DA behind that, um, then it can be passed very quickly in the provincial legislature. So I, I would love to certainly get the 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 legislation in place long before twenty twenty four, so that we go into it. And, and interesting enough. Um, if we can get the self-determination bill passed, um, then um, you are, one of the things with self-determination is, is you acquire the right or the justification. Let's not say right. That probably is, un is untrue. You acquire the legal justification to act unilaterally. So what starts to happen? So now imagine a scenario where you have that bill passed, even though it's just provincially, and you do end up with an ANC, uh, EFF, RET, um, uh, you know, coalition government and they decide no they're going to do away with property rights then the western cape at that point would be quite justified to say well not here uh, and, and and start to make decisions that are that are fundamentally different um from from the rest of the country so that bill becomes really quite important so, so i think you know 2024 is a really pivotal moment in everything um and and i think there's too many moving parts to tie those down um 
interesting one of the things that i've that i've talked about several times including with 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 uh, you know some quite senior characters who haven't cottoned on you know actually they that they, they people tend to get horrified at this this notion of the western cape acting unilaterally and you have to point out to them uh, that, that they're already doing it um and and you know the, the most brazen act um that the western cape government has 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 uh, done so far was to ban Russian diplomats from Western Cape at the embassies and premises and invite the Ukrainian uh, ambassador into Alan Windy and to, to engage with them over the war. Now, that is completely unconstitutional, borders on being treasonous, um, and it's the and it's actually you know, it's one of the four there are there are four uh, characteristics of a country um, a border, a population. Um, a, a, a political authority and the ability to conduct foreign relations with another country. So actually, there are, under no circumstances does the Western Cape have the authority to enact uh, in, uh, foreign relations in defiance of its national government. But it did it. It did it. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so, so and what happened? Absolutely nothing. The Russian, the Russian uh, 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 dignitaries were banned. The Ukrainian people did come in. Uh, the, you know, the the, the the Cape Town town hall was swathed in the in the colours of the Ukrainian flag. And irrelevant of whatever you may think or not think of 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 of, of the politics around that war, it just shows that where the will is to act unilaterally, it can be done. Uh, and and once you have that justification, so twenty twenty four is a very very pivotal moment. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with that. I I didn't know it was treasonous, so that's that's interesting. Um, I hope the ANC doesn't watch this because I don't think they even know. Um, but <laughs> oh, right. look, I'm I'm, I'm using the word treasonous. I, I perhaps perhaps glibly, but it yeah, it, it certainly is complete defiance of the of the of the national let's say unconstitutional. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, there's a lot more questions uh, to get through here, which, again, I'm, I'm glad you guys are um, are sending in the question. I'm going to try and get to all of them as much as I can. Uh, I'm just getting to some of them that I've already uh, marked here. And I want to um, – World View is watching. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, I think his name is Donald, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, for 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 watching, and I'm I'm gonna get to your questions in a moment. I just want to pop up a few of these that I I, I think this one's gonna be a quick qu uh, a quick answer. So, uh, did the British government ever respond to the letter Robert King delivered to Boris Boris's office? Not to the best of my knowledge. Uh, it would have gone to an address in the UK, actually. So 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 no, I don't think so. Um, yeah. Which is a shame, but but I, I uh, yeah well I probably would have thought we'd have got a, we'd have got a a, a, a um, recognition, yeah. um, but I haven't received it yet. Maybe, maybe it's sitting somewhere in the UK. <laughs> All right, uh, and then Stephen Bain asks: um, Before a referendum, we need to educate people because there are hundreds and thousands of Cape Townians that have still not heard of 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 <laughs> and what the future will look like under Cape Independence? Question mark. I'm not sure if it's a question but um i mean do you have anything to say about that no i agree with him look awareness is a is clearly an issue uh, and it's something that you know that we that we we uh, work hard on but there's a lot more work to to, to be done and and, and it, yeah i think it becomes a, a incremental anyway you know you say it's one of those things we definitely have to do um but things like, for example, when, once we start to get towards a referendum and, and, and uh, you, you know, you, a referendum for argument is called, you, you start to create its own momentum too. Um, but, but, but we're working with all of the independence groups and it's always a challenge to, uh, to create awareness. Um, the CIAG is a political lobby group, so, it's, so, so awareness isn't our first primary goal. Um, Organisations like Cape Exit are much more uh, you know, uh, grassroots orientated, but it is something that we definitely have to do, I agree. Mm. Uh, and I would agree with that too. And I, I'm sure in time, uh, more and more people will be hearing about uh, the benefits of Cape secession. Um, look, definitely more people are talking about it now than ever before. So that's a good thing. Um, then uh, Andreas, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that last name, sorry. Uh, Joe, please ask Phil why he left out or did not invite the Cape Independence Group to join the Devolution Coalition. Now, I'm not... I don't know of a group that's called Cape Independence Group. Uh, Cape Independence Party is part of it. So I'm not sure if this, uh, unless you know of a group that is called that, or is he talking about 
keep exit no look so so um i i know um andreas um he's a yeah he's a he's an interesting character we, we we've had some good times and we've had some bad times uh he's welcome to contact me privately and i'll, and I'll, and I'll chat to him about that i'm not going to answer it on air <laughs> okay fair enough um and then uh conrad uh says uh when we secede the national debt will stay with south africa yes we can argue that the Cape also paid our percentage of infrastructure uh, for the other provinces. Look, so so look, clearly that has, something has to be negotiated. But the norm would be that we would uh, we would we would take our fair share with us. Um, so I think uh, you know, and and clearly, yeah, money is always going to be an issue, and you and you wouldn't want to uh, you wouldn't want to hamper the negotiations by by. Yeah, being overly hard on, on on the finances, I think probably one of the things that we can offer South Africa um, is, is is a relatively good settlement to deal on on uh, uh, financial deal. Uh, you know, I think our freedom is worth much more than, than 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 you know the sort of last last cents and so on. But in principle, you know, you you would have an equitable agreement. So so we would yeah we would take a share of the assets, we take a share of the debt, and that would only be uh, that would only be reasonable. Cool. Um, I think that's that's a fair uh, answer, and that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to pop up this first question, which I think is a bit of a inside joke between the two of you, Donald and and yourself. I know you've been on Donald's <laughs> channel a few times. Um, so <laughs> has Phil ever researched how to hack a database, or contacted an expert on how to hack a database? <laughs> No, no, not yet. <laughs> I knew that so, was an inside no. joke. <laughs> So, 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 somebody is just doubling down on security at Cape Exit for their database. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, look, we, yeah. we, we are trying to look. We have been trying, and I, and I don't mind saying it. We had we yeah. For us, there's a, there's a look. We, we we love the people at Cape Exit, and we think they they're, they're they're great, and they've done this phenomenal feat of of getting this big you know database built up effectively. All of these all of these people that have signed up for their mandates. Um, but but we really want them to start deploying those people politically, you know. And and uh, you know sometimes it's a bit frustrating. Um, uh, KPEX are often the first to sort of complain that uh, that the that, 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 uh, the DA aren't playing ball, uh, but but we obviously tend to, you know there's a slight frustration for that in terms of you know one in two, one in two Western Cape voters have their names and addresses on on, on the the, the Cape Exit database. Um, and and we would love to Cape Exit to actually deploy those politically, um, uh, but it's uh, look it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a a, a sensitive point and ultimately it's their database and they must deploy it how they see fit. Um, but for us it's slightly frustrating because I think that would that would uh, uh, deliver huge m momentum to the to the Cape Independence movement and and I think it's yeah it's slightly frustrating that we kind of you know we we're sort of fighting with one hand tied behind our back. But but there yeah. you go, it's their choice. Their choice. Um... All right, so I have to address this one because it's a super chat. So thank you so much, uh, Rosalind Gerber, for the super chat, 35 Rand super chat sent in. Thank you so much. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. Um, and he asks, or she asks, sorry, um, can Mr. Craig please comment on his thoughts on WEF interference in the secession movement? I have no idea what this person's talking about. <coughs> Well, so so, and to a certain extent, neither neither do I. Look, I'm not a conspiracist. I have to say, so so. Um, I, I, you know, I'm aware of the the, you know, the the World Economic Forum (WEF), and I'm I'm sort of broadly aware of some of these uh, these conspiracies. Um, I don't put an, an awful lot of faith in them my, myself, and at this point in time, uh, certainly I don't think anybody's interfered in in in, in you know, and, and I include actually, to, in fairness, the ANC too. You know, at no point have I felt interfered with or threatened, or you know, and, and obviously, you know, we've, we, we're pretty open in terms of what we're doing. So I have to say, uh, no, uh, haven't really had any any issues. Um, you know, there probably are. Yeah, you know, well, there are people in the movement who are who are. Um, Perhaps I'm perhaps I'm naive. Uh, I'm a very trusting soul, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm. I, I believe in Occam's razor, and fool me once, shame on you, and fool me twice, shame on me. So that's how I tend to uh, uh, live my life. But but no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm certainly not aware of anything. 
let's leave it at that. Yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, more questions from Worldview 2.0. <laughs> um, let's see, which one do I want to start? Because these questions, these, there's two questions, which I think are very good questions. Um, I'm, I think I'll start with this one. Um, is the Cape Independence Party heading in the right direction? Well, I'm not quite sure which direction they're heading in at the moment. So, um, <clears throat> look, I, I I think there's some very good people at the Cape Independence Party who who are who are keen to uh, who who are keen to to make progress and are, and are willing to in, engage. So, I don't know is the honest answer. I think clearly they've been uh, you know, um, you know f from my perspective, that you know, they haven't performed terribly well in, in previous elections, and I would re really like them to to perform better. Um, we have got a project uh, ongoing that's likely to to in, to involve them, um, and uh, and we'll see. I, look, I, I, what I can be very honest I, is is I think the Cape Independence Party get their messaging wrong, um, and I think they tend to sort of uh, be a bit of a fringe party with 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 um, messages that probably don't appeal to the to the to the mainstream market, um, and I think as an independence party they should really just be a single issue party and not get involved in all of the stuff around the fringes um and i think more than that i think one of the things that they they um i wish the cape independence party would do for, or if i was running the cape independence party let's say it that way um is is i think they should target da voters much more much more aggressively than they do um and i think come 2024 their best strategy would be to try and get people who are going to vote da nationally to vote Cape Independence Party provincially, um, and uh, and and I think that would require a slightly different approach to the one they've got, where they tend to be quite antagonistic to the DA, and you're not going to get people who are loyal DA voters to sort of to vote for you um, um, tactically, shall we say, if actually you're you're, you're you know you're always um, uh, you know insulting the, the the party that those people are really loyal to. And so so I would I would like to see you know, but I mean that's that's just my own personal opinion, and, and ultimately, it's, running a political party is not an easy thing to do, and I, and I take my hat off to those people that do it. And there's a lot of great people inside of the Cape Independence Party. Agreed. Uh, look, I think Jack is a great guy. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, Rosan Herbert just gave a comment that I wanted to, to bring up to you. He says, WEF is not a conspiracy. You own nothing and be happy. It's a global movement. I can assist if you wish. So just putting it out there, uh, offering his assistance there. Um, and then, uh, okay, so Dollar, uh, uh, Donald, once again, uh, I, I love this. Uh, he says, uh, does Phil think people should like and subscribe and share this video if they like the content? Well, I'll answer that. Yes. <laughs> of course, Phil does. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, one of, I think the last question from Donald is, uh, does the Western Cape need a new party that is like the DA, but pro-independence? And should Ian Cameron lead this party? I say yes to that, but I don't know if Ian Cameron would go into politics. But um, I, I don't think he would. But um, if if that was going to be a thing, I, I would I'd vote for that party just just on the basis of Ian Cameron. <laughs> uh, well, Ian, Ian Ian is part of the working group, by the way. Yes, uh, Action Society, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So, but <laughs> but what do you think? Do, do you think there should be a, a another party that is like the DA? I think uh, I think there must so so so. so um, I think logically speaking there needs that they should there should be there should be at least two independence parties one is the freedom front plus who I think could do a fantastic job at mopping up uh, people disaffected da voters and I think there needs to be a corresponding party that that that, that mops up loyal DA voters and, and, and can get them to protest vote for Cape Independence in exactly the way that the Brexit Party did to, to Conservative Party voters in the, in the UK. Um, and then I think it's up to the Cape Independence Party to decide whether it's going to fulfil that role. Um, or whether, And if it's not, then we need a party that is going to fulfil that role. So so I think that ball's in, the, in their court. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and then once again, Andre uh, giving a 80 rand super chat. Uh, so I do have to address the comment. Um, he says, uh, the and thank you, by the way, for the 80 round super chats. Greatly appreciated. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. The Cape Independence uh, Group has a combined membership between, between group and pages of 80,000 plus members. I would like to know publicly why we were not invited. Thanks. 
Well, I'm not going to tell you publicly. I think he, I think I think he knows perfectly well why he wasn't invited. But he's happy. To, he's happy to have it to to to, uh, to, to chat to me. And I, I look at the end of the day, Andre and I have had our ups and downs, and I I think his heart's absolutely in the right place. Yeah. Hey, look, I I bring the questions. I can't force my guest to answer them. Uh, that's not how this channel works. So, uh, but thanks anyway, both uh, Andre and um, I believe the name was Ros. Rosalind uh, for the super chats, uh, or as we call them on this channel, Sasa chats. Uh, it's, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. Apparently, I missed a question. I'm sorry. Can you please uh, copy and paste once again your question very quickly as we're about to end? We have uh, just under five minutes left of the show, and I will pop it up. Sorry. Um, but anyway, um, Phil, you know, bef as we get the uh, questions coming in, um, Hold on, there is a question here, uh, but it's from one of my trolls, so I don't know if I necessarily want to put it up. Um, uh, no, I'm not going to put that question up. All right, so um, I wanted to just ask you very quickly, Phil, is there anything else you wanted to mention on the show? Uh, you know, any other updates you want to give very quickly uh, about the independence movement uh other than what we've already discussed. No, look, I don't think so. Look, just to reassure people that, uh, you know, it's been, a, in many ways, it's been a, it's been a different year, uh, but please don't give up hope. Things things are going well. Actually, interestingly enough, we had, we had a, a a big strategy session on Saturday where all of the independence groups were uh, were, were present, um, and that was a really productive day, and, and, and we'll, we'll see what comes of that. Um, we've, you know, with this, we, you know, we've got a couple of, of key bits of legislation that, we, that we're closing in on getting passed, uh, and, uh, yeah, we've got a little project on on the go that I'll talk more about later. So, but things are really starting to 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 move in the right direction. Um, and I think uh, you know, look, and as we get closer and closer to twenty twenty four, I think I think the the movement for Cape Independence is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger as people realise what's at stake. Um, so, look, we we really appreciate people's frustra uh, patience. I should say we understand their frustrations because they want things to happen happen quicker um we desperately want them to ha happen quicker too um and uh, you know all i would say to people is is you know look the, the best way that you can get things to happen quicker is to get involved get involved with one of the one of the organizations uh, and uh, yeah as, uh, the, the more momentum we can create around this the quicker that it'll happen because ultimately we're going to have to force the western cape government uh, to uh, to act in, in 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 the way that we want them to act and and, and you know that's going to take a concerted effort Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I okay. So I will ask this question because uh, Matthew, my resident troll, said it's a serious question, and I'll <laughs> trust him on this one. If the referendum occur, will Phil want a national vote or stick to a provincial vote? The Western Cape is still part of the national public, uh, therefore n of national interest. I know the answer to that, but Phil, I'll, I'll let you answer that. Yeah, look, it's a provincial vote all the way. Look, it, it, it's it's uh, um, you know it's it's self determination, and the key word in self determination is self. Uh, you can't have other other people making decisions for you. The Western Cape must decide for itself. Um, and uh, look, clearly there's there's huge precedent. You know, you, I mean, there isn't a case in the world where independence referendums took place with people who weren't part of the region that was that was seceding. Uh, it, it, it's always the seceding territory that votes. It can't be any, any other way. Yeah. And nor should it be. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so in other words, Western Cape will vote for Western Cape. Um, what if what if someone um, has a holiday home in the Western Cape and lives in any other province? Could they maybe, you know, travel to the <coughs> Western Cape, cast their vote, move back? Does that work? Well, look, I think so. So, look, the, the the rules of the referendum will have to be set and have to be agreed, um, and um, you know there there will be all sorts of things that will have to be yet to be considered, and, and and clearly there'll have to be a a a criteria um, around you know, who is eligible to vote or not, and that may well be different to in a in a in a, in a general election. Obviously, in a normal election, then people are can only be in one province at a time, so that kind of keeps it honest. Uh, clearly, you can't have a scenario where every Tom, Dick, and Harry decides to register in the Western Cape to try and influence the the election. So there'll clearly have to be some criteria. Um, 
around residency. Uh, what that is will will have to be uh, will have to be determined. And and, and interestingly, under international law, there's some real extreme examples, um, which I'm not going to go into. But but uh, yeah, this, there's quite a lot of case law around this, and and uh, clearly. One of the key things that the Western Cape government will have to do when it calls a referendum is ensure that it's representative of the, the Western Cape people and, and only the Western Cape people, and, and you know, not, not other people who who have a have a don't have a right to vote. Uh, and certainly, that would be people who you know obviously wanted to just come for the purpose of spoiling the referendum. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know as well. Um, all right. So very quickly, ladies and gentlemen, I have three more. Um... Uh, questions and that's it. Uh, so, because I do have to cut it off, we're going to go over time now. Uh, so, I did get the question back from the person who said that I missed their question. Uh, will the cancelled meeting in Swartland uh, be rescheduled? People need to know their options. Robert King did address this and said, I think the Swartland event relates to Cape Exit, not the CIAG. But as far as I know, it is rescheduled. Uh, Phil, you can give a comment if you wish. Yeah, I don't know anything about it, so it's, it's not it's not a CIAG event. Okay, there we go. And then finally, and this is just to end on a bit of a another laugh. Uh, is the rumor true that Phil Craig met his MI6 handler at a Jack Miller High School reunion? <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be an inside joke. I don't know about this. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I met him when I was at Eton with with uh, with Boris Johnson. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to conclude uh, my time with my guest, uh, Phil Craig from Cape Independence Amnesty Group. Phil, uh, thank you so much once again for joining, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Phil's Twitter is in the description as well as Cape, uh, Cape Independence Amnesty Group website and Twitter is also uh, in the description. Please give them a follow and check out the website. Uh, please go check out the website. Um, is there anything people can can uh, fill in on the website can people still register or or do you still have that going sure so if yeah look we, we we put out a newsletter every month with news so if people want to keep updated um, then they can just uh, fill out the uh, the registration form on the uh, on the thing on the on the um, website and uh, then they'll get a, a monthly uh, emailed newsletter each month giving you the latest news on cape independence Fantastic. Um, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Phil Craig, once again, thank you so much for your time. Great conversation. And uh, we'll have you back soon, I'm sure. Cool. All right. Cheers, Joe. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you again. Cheers.